Hey guys, it's Lindsay. Welcome or welcome back. Long time no chat. I thought since this is my first video back, we would just do a quick level set on an updated planner system because last time we chatted, I was pre-move and in a Hobonichi Weeks mega for planning. And now we are post-move. We've got a new background, new lighting, new acoustics. So things look and sound weird. I'm sorry. Still trying to kind of figure that out. But with the post-move happening, uh, the stress has dissipated and I really was craving a lot of comfort and consistency and that's kind of what drove me I think to move into my Hobonichi weeks but now that we're on the other side of it I'm craving a space that's a little bit more creative a lot more flexible but still very portable and that's kind of driven me back into ring planning but particularly in pocket rings so today I want to do a flip through of my refresh setup I just print and cut everything a couple days ago so she is brand new and then I'll talk briefly about my archive which is going to be the Hobonichi cousin but the deep dive on that is the next video because believe it or not I am back <laughs> to regularly scheduled programming so we should be back to our weekly Saturday updates but enough of that my planner uh, so this is the Filofax Ranger in pocket size it's a brown cover it's non-leather I picked this up in January and I found mine on eBay they unfortunately no longer make this model I think they stopped in like 2004 but sometimes you'll see them pop up on eBay, buy, sell, trade groups, things like that. I've been seeing a lot more of them surface this year. I don't know what's going on with that, but I do really love this cover and I'm excited to be using it. I am using this as a planner wallet combo. So I've got in the gusseted pocket, just like some credit cards, um, gift cards, some cash coins, things like that. And then on the inside, there are three card slots and I've just got some things covered, but I do keep a couple cards in there as well. This planner has a lot of pockets, which I love. There's a slip pocket here, a mesh pocket, the two credit cards, the big mesh pocket, a big slip pocket, and then there's even a bonus slip pocket in the back. So really great for that. But the main downside of this cover is that the pen loop is <laughs> pretty much terrible. So I just clip my pen on there and that's fine. I've yet to find anything that fits in there, but not, not a deal breaker for me. This planner also has 16 millimeter rings, I believe, so it's relatively small, but I'm always surprised at what can fit in here. And um, as with my personal ring setup, if you saw that earlier in the year, or you've been following me along chronologically, this is more or less my everything book with the exception of I'm not really memory keeping in here. This is a lot more pure planning focused and I'm gonna shift up my perspective on how I keep my inserts as well, but I'm not sure if I'm ready to talk about that in this video, but we might touch on it. So without further ado, let's actually get into the pages here. So in the front, I just have a Polaroid that I printed out on a piece of acetate. We took this on our trip to Iceland in 2022. I have an insert from Peanuts Planner Co. in the front. This is from her 147 dated yearly bundle. And I do my goal planning on this and then just star stickers from Amazon to see where we are throughout the year. Behind that, I keep um, just some layering pieces. I've got my vertical half pages and the two by three photo pages. These are freebies from my shop. And then my first section is my inbox and monthly. So my dividers, by the way, are from Filofax. They just come with your standard Filofax cover nowadays. Um, but I have just given myself a little bit of a key because as I mentioned, I set this up like two days ago, so I'm still getting used to it. So divider number one is inbox slash monthly. Divider number two is habits, lists, collections. Divider number three is dates. So that's my weeklies, my work weeklies, and my dailies. Number four is health slash uh, grocery shopping. Number five is journal and reference. And number six is supposed to be my sketchbook, but right now I've just got gaming stuff in there. Haven't cut down any sketchbook paper, but we'll get there. So in the inbox, I'm currently using a new insert that I'm trying out. Um, I'm calling this the circle checklist, but they're kind of inspired by the Filofax style checklist. They have a little bit of a grid background and then the circles and there's two rows of grid per circle. So you can kind of get some detailed notes in here, but I'm currently just have a list in here of things I wanted to do in this particular setup. Still got a couple things left. And then the Hobonichi Cousin, I'm still kind of moving into fully. So I've got a few things that I need to do and a quick list for that as well. And then I just keep some blank ones. 
Behind that is my monthly calendar and um, this is a modified version of the one in my shop. I have an undated version with grids in every single box but I wanted to try out a blank box so each of the months there's grid in the sidebar and then at the bottom but the boxes themselves are blank. If you guys are interested in that let me know I can make a listing for it but um, I'm also trying to cross out the days as I go just trying new things all around and my clear dividers which I use as a like today marker these are from randy.plans I don't know if she still carries dividers but I've had these for well over four maybe even five years <laughs> at this point um, and then I'm using the two by three photo page just as a running to-do list for the month um, again and that one's the freebie from the shop so I do have a full year in here so that I can future plan, just write down events, appointments, things as they are scheduled. Yeah, and then in the back, I have a Alistair method, which I use for tracking future dates, basically. So I've got something scheduled for the 1st of June of 2025. So that's how I keep track of those things. Behind divider number two is habit trackers, lists and collections, as I mentioned. So this is probably my favorite section between this and a daily to-do list. I, I, I need those two things. I probably need a monthly too, but this is my favorite part of my system by far. I have my mood log in the front. This is the compact mood log from the shop. So I just track my overall mood across the board at the end of each day. And then one thing that I'm grateful for. I have a monthly habit tracker on the back, which I've yet to fill out. And then we move into my annual habit trackers. So I've got my cycle log where I just track um, when I'm menstruating, some different symptoms, things like that. Planner log, no spend tracker, blank spread. I'm still moving things over for my other planners. I just printed things a couple days ago, as I mentioned. I have my workout log, so I'm just tracking the first letter of the workout that I do. So I worked out Monday through Friday, and then I skipped Saturday, Sunday, so that's where the dots are there. And I like this insert because I made a little summary column, so at the end of each week I could total up like what's my average workout, average minutes, things like that. Um, I've been tracking my average weight over there, so I just need to kind of backfill this. And then I have a blank one, which I'm going to use to track minutes worked out or pace of walk, one or the other. I have my adulting log here. So this is just where I track things that I don't do every single week or day. They're more like non-automated adulting tasks. So like washing our mattress pack cover, changing smoke detector batteries, paying our vehicle registration, those types of things. And then on the back, I use the same insert just to track medical information. So again, need to transfer that over, but like, when did I go to the doctor? Last time I had symptoms for something, renewing prescriptions, those kinds of things. And then we have um, this little index clip. These are Midori index clips, by the way, in silver. I use them as subdividers behind divider number two. So now we're kind of in my finance subsection. So I have my spending and package tracker. So just date, description, money in um, or money out, what my current balance is and then shipped and received. And then I have a debit spread, which is similar, but it's just how I track things I get charged the wrong account within our household finances or if I need to move money between like savings and checking, that kind of thing. I have a Lindsay Scribbles tracker, which again, <laughs> needs to be filled in, but this is where I keep track of like, my perks for Patreon, expenses, um, shop new releases, YouTube video, filming, editing, that kind of stuff all goes in here. And then if I have any expenses related to Lindsay Scribbles, I track those on the back for tax season. My next subsection is my collections, which is a bullet journal term basically to say here are my ongoing lists of things that I like to update or reference information that I want to find again. So I have a wish list and this insert is in the shop as well. So it's whether or not I got it, the date I added it to my wish list because I try and sit on things for at least a month before I make a purchase, what the item is. And then I just have a couple categories. I haven't written in what they are, but basically it's planner or clothing because those are the only two things I end up <laughs> usually adding to my list. Um, some things potentially to de-stash, gift ideas for my family members. And then um, a new release list for the shop. These that are highlighted are things that I'm working on for this month. And then I have some checklists for our move. We just recently moved, so we need to retitle our vehicle, get new driver's license, those kinds of things, mail forwarding, and then things to explore in our area. So those are what those lists are. 
Um, section number three, I kind of loosely titled dates. So this is weeklies, work weeklies, and dailies. I don't, I don't know why monthlies aren't behind this tab. I, do, I don't make the rules. It's just how it worked out. Um, but I have two versions of a perpetual calendar um, that I have plans for. So basically, if I write something on a daily log that I want to be able to find again, I would index it here. But because I'm going to archive into the Hobonichi Cousin, I kind of want to keep a replicated version of what my index is in the Cousin because I might have indexed something, say, from April from a note on a daily that my April inserts are done and gone, and I may or may not be keeping them, haven't decided at this point, but I would have hopefully transferred anything important into my archive, that being the Hobonichi Cousin, and indexed it. So this is so I could find that information and be like, I think I wrote that down, and then that way I'm referencing my, my archive to find it versus like trying to dig through dailies, that kind of thing. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> I haven't set it up yet, haven't decided if we're gonna do that. Um, so then we move into my weeklies, and I did make a new insert. These are kind of loosely inspired by the Filofax ones, so they're a week on two page. This is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Habit Tracker at the bottom. There is a blank box for each of the days of the week, and I'm kind of putting my events there or like important notes throughout the day, and then just to do's that are date specific, and then a Habit Tracker at the bottom. In my head, I was gonna have more room for like floating tasks that don't need to be day specific over here, but that <laughs> did not end up being the case. So if I have a task that isn't date specific, I've just been trying to plug it in on a day and then like today is Wednesday and I got a call that a part is in for a vehicle. So I need to schedule an appointment and instead of putting that on today's, I just had blank space on Monday. So I went ahead and added it on Monday. I don't know, we're trying new things, but I'm a little bit over the rolling weekly and just wanted to try something <laughs> different. So, so far I'm liking it. I'm using my Zebra Mild Liner, like we're traveling this weekend and um, an important task, that kind of thing. And then I've got a month's worth in here at a time. So things are kind of pre-scheduled throughout the month. And then we have my work subsection. And then I just have a, a bottom tab again that takes me to my current weekly. But I'm using the same five-day vertical weekly in the blank version from my shop. And I just keep track of like work hours, most important tasks or like big meetings I need to prep for up top. And then just the bottom is a just running to-do list basically of <laughs> things that kind of come in. Um, direct contacts, that kind of thing. So I can kind of keep track of that in here. And then again, I keep a month's worth in here. And I don't typically keep my work pages at the end of the month. I don't really need them once I get past it. So I tend to toss them, but I have been hanging on to them, at least all the ones in my personal size. So I'll probably still hang on to them for no reason other than I'm interested to see how many I use. <laughs> but Following that, we then have my dailies, and I'm using the horizontal daily log insert, again, from the shop. Um, I really like this layout. It works really well, particularly in a small size because the rings just don't genuinely get in the way. If you're left-handed, maybe this is something to consider as well as a horizontal insert, but I usually do the date, the day of the week, um, any like big events for the day or notes um, go up top, and then otherwise it's my running to-do list. And then at the bottom of whatever space is left over, I'm doing a little bit of journaling. And I have enough room in here for 30 full dailies. I do set up a daily every single day. And the idea is that at the end of the day, I would look at this and then transfer important information over into my archive and do more of the memory keeping and journaling in there. But again, we'll talk about that next week. So hopefully you guys are excited for a little bit of Hobonichi Cousin back on the channel. But one thing I like about having like a true daily as compared to when I'm bullet journaling is I'll kind of end up hitting a point later in the day if I'm in a bullet journal where I have to decide, okay, um, I'm done adding tasks to today's date. I'm gonna go ahead and start my entry for the next day. and with my rings, it's nice to have like a page per day because I can keep adding to this list and putting in notes and even add in like an extra notes insert if I need it, if I need more space per day, but I can already kind of sit down and think through the next day, what am I gonna need and kind of get that off my brain. And cause otherwise it just feels like a lot of clutter sitting on my mind. I don't, I don't know if anyone else is like that, but it's something I really, really enjoy about rings. Okay, uh, section number four is my um, 
diet, nutrition, and shopping section. It's basically, this is just where I meal plan. That, that's the end of that. So um, I do have a fold out insert that I made myself. It's just a 12 week menu. Um, I am working on bringing a fold out and a non fold out version to the shop. Um, but on here, there is a Monday through Sunday. So I write my lunches, my dinners, and then any groceries I need throughout this week. And then I can overflow into here or I'll use the space to like audit what we have in the pantry and if I wanna pre-plan for something else. And that's been really nice. And I typically cross days off as I go throughout. And then this insert I've yet to fill out, but this is from Peanuts Planner Co. Again, the 147 dated yearly bundle and I will pull over all my dot stickers. I think I might have one in my weeks that I should just pull out and punch, but I typically do a different dot sticker just to track days that I have ate out, had alcohol or dairy, just because those are things that I'm trying to limit a little bit this year. So that's just a visual representation of that. So um, I'll clear out some dot stickers and recreate that. And then I just have some notes in here on some of the stuff I've been learning about health and nutrition. And then on the back, I have a subsection for uh, shopping. So basically I made myself like a master Sam's Club shopping list because we only go at best once a month, more likely every two or three. And just things that we are typically getting between me and my husband whenever we go there. So it's sort of like a trigger list. And then I'm using that same checklist as a running shopping list. So as of think of things I need to get at Sam's Club that goes on here or Amazon. I kind of just, I call it the Sam's Club section, but it's, it's basically anytime we go to the store other than my day-to-day -day groceries because those go on here. Okay, so then section number five is my journaling section and I'm trying out again the infamous sticker tagging system for topics. Again, I don't know if I'll keep up with it. I have so many dot stickers that I've been hoarding from Daiso, so I figured I would just kind of use them. So what I'm trying is private thoughts, lists, ideas, inspiration, planner related, words that are not my own, um, an open color, it's white, and then whether or not I've taken action on that or archived it and indexed it into my cousin. Um, so just like some ideas for like that weekly insert that I tried, how I want to use my cousin versus my pocket and some delineators there, dear diary journaling, someone said something that I liked how they said that and then I was expanding on it, um, private thoughts, how I want to do my archiving breakdown, I've been journaling like my thoughts in different colors which has been kind of cool and then like lists or things that I would kind of reference in black ink so I've been liking that delineation and then just some ideas for this particular video. This Filofax ruler came with one of my covers. I don't remember, it's 2014, so it's not an old one by any means. And then I'm just using the notes insert from my shop. Um, I think I'm using the four millimeter. The pocket size comes with the three millimeter grid as well, if you're curious. Um, so that's what I'm currently using there. And then last section is supposed to be a, um, sketchbook but it's just my gaming reference right now because I haven't been sketching naughty <laughs> so I printed out the Stardew Valley gift guide I found this image on reddit if you just google Stardew Valley gift guide reddit and then go to image results you should find this and then I upload this into canva resize it to roughly pocket size and then I printed it and I slitted these last few so that I can kind of tuck them in and out because it's a rather large image and then again Reddit image that I found, Stardew Valley Community Center by Season, and then again uploaded that in Canva so I could just make myself a quick little add-in. Um, last day to print, plant by Season, and then winter just so I can remember birthdays, and then I <laughs> painstakingly finally put together my own Pokemon type chart matchup and aesthetic colors and it didn't print all that great because I'm just using my regular Kakuyo business paper. By the way, I don't think I mentioned that yet. Um, I use the Kakuyo business paper in A4, which is a 64 GSM paper. I do buy the A4 paper because in mine and the Patreon community's experience, the A4 is found pen friendly. The letter size for some reason is not. Um, which can make printing a little bit of a pain. I'm slowly working on adding A4 sizes to all of the inserts that I add in the shop so that I could just print easily on A4 paper without messing with settings. But uh, pro tip, I guess, if you're a fountain pen user and I'm doing all my writing with my Pilot Vanishing Point in Extra Fine Inked with Diaz Tremendous Archive Ink and 
um she's looking a little beat up she needs cleaned <laughs> i don't think i've properly cleaned this pen in three or four months i've just been refilling it so that's something to add to the to-do list um in the back i've got a pokemon card i always keep a pokemon with me 2024's umbreon's year and yeah um some spare dot stickers like i mentioned and two by three photo freebies again from the shop so i can add this in for layering and that is my summer planner maybe it will take us into the fall i'm just hoping it gets us through the next few months because i've been trying out a lot of things but i'm really liking this setup and i'm excited to reintroduce the hobonichi cousin as an archive again because that sort of frees me up to do more planner hopping so when i'm tired of this and maybe i want more space i can move back into my personal rings for the fall or maybe i'm feeling the hobonichi weeks because i want more um more structure <laughs> or maybe even i set up a pocket bullet journal again the sky's the limit with that but anyway hope you've been doing well hope may was kind to you and i will see you next week on a deep dive on my home and cousin talk to you later